The tail of the tape in the main event brought to you by Dave and Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. What can you highlight for the experience of Marlos Kunin? 30 professional fights. Julia Budd just nine and two. History time, main event time, Michael C. Williams time. Ladies and gentlemen, Miller Live presents Bellator MMA Live on Spike. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the inaugural Bellator Women's Featherweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Tickets on Nation Office of the Gaming Commissioner, Mr. Scott Colbert. Tonight's world title fight brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. It's Miller time. And now, introducing the blue corner at first, at 5 foot 8, weighing in 144.8 pounds, her professional record, 9 wins, 2 losses from Port Moody, British Columbia, Canada, Julia, the Jewel Bug. And across the cage, your adversary fights out of the red corner at five foot nine, weighing in 144.7 pounds. The former bantamweight world champion enters tonight with 23 professional victories, seven defeats from Amsterdam, Netherlands, presenting Marus Rubinho Kune. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Big John McCarthy. Fourth time for John McCarthy with Marlouz Kunin. All right, we've gone over the rules in the back. I want you to protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. I want you to fight hard, but fight clean. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. All the names we've been talking about all night that they have been in there with, they're all watching right now. You can feel it. And that is what it's about. The fight clock in the most anticipated main event in a long, long time. Brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers. It's Miller time. Against Chris Cyborg, immediately what Marlos Kunin tried to do is get the fight up against the fence and use the clinch game. Well, Julia Budd doesn't have that power. Nobody in the world has that power. Armies don't have that power, which Chris Cyborg has. Will that be the blueprint for the way she tries to fight Julia Budd? I don't think she should. I think she should stick and move, stay elusive, stay fast. Look for her opportunity to take it to the ground, not waste a lot of energy in the clinch. That's why. Look at that. We talk about strength. Julia Budd's got it. If you were with us earlier on the prelims, I gave you this stat about Marlos Kunin. One out of every three minutes Chris Cyborg has ever spent in the cage had been with Marlos Kunin. 37 minutes those two fought each other. He's in a crank position, but can't really use it from here. See there, she's cranking on the head. She's doing that by getting underneath the armpit. She can sweep from there, but it's hard to finish, hard to submit. Yeah, Julia Bud's out. And that's what I meant about being on top. So Julie Bud's so strong. She stays patient. She can wear Marlou's Kunin down by just staying on top, working her ground and pound. Kunin has a great submission game. She wants to stay busy here. Julia Bud, as many of you know, coached by her husband, Lance Gibson. You will hear tonight. You can look at from time to time. Pull your head back out, step on that leg, Jules. Try to get the A lot of people out. feel that way. Pull it out, take it out. Keep your and for all the, the mainstream names we've talked about, Marlos Kunin has fought Misha Tate, and Julia Budd has beaten Jermaine Durandamy, and fought Amanda Nunes, and fought Ronda Rousey. Some of the other names, Jimmy, we were talking about earlier in the early days of the sport. You know, they're all watching, too. Watch your arm here. Put her head against the gate. Don't put your toe there. Don't grab it. 
And you see here, Julia Budd's not able to use that ground and pound. She's busy worrying about the submission attack of Marlus Kunin. That's why she's not really getting busy with a ground and pound. She's worried about getting submitted. She's getting her posture broken down. Marlus Kunin so far being effective from her back. Inside the biceps. the biceps. The judges look at this round. Are they looking at Marlouz being on offense and Julia being on defense? That's the question. Or do they look at the fact that Julia Bud is on top? Marlouz comes on the bottom. I was in triangle position. Yeah, moving up higher on the shoulder. Comes to angle the other way. It's a long way for her hips. She wants to get on the other leg of Julia Bud. That's how she can tighten this triangle, but up against the fence, it's hard to do that. See, it's been Marlouz Kunin being aggressive from the back. Julia Budd not able to get the distance to get effective ground and pound yet. She's out of triangle danger for the most part. Still a little bit of danger there. Her, her hips are just in the wrong position right now. See Marlouz Kunin just suddenly bringing her back down to the ground. Good. Head on the cage. Let's work out now. Watch your arm. Watch your arm. Doing some damage, but still in submission danger. Is not completely out of that triangle yet. The arm's halfway in, so it's hard to finish, but she still, still has to worry about it. Right now, doesn't have the space to turn her hips. And this round is a nightmare to score. Exactly what I was thinking, because Marlos Kunin has it where she wants it. But is she doing enough with it now? And Julia Budd hasn't been able to do that much with the ground and pound either. Always good to see Mercedes. Mercedes mailbag was an interesting one this week. If you want to check that out on Bellator.com. In between rounds one and rounds two, what was the message from Lance Gibson to his wife, Julia Button? Don't get your head buried. Keep your head high. Do not land in her guard if you don't have to. Try to pass. You don't have to sit in her guard. Free that head. Those were her two instructions. Easy takedown. Ridiculously easy. And this time from the side. Yeah. She made sure to take her down and not go into the guard of Marlos Kuna where she spent. her coach, exactly. Now, you said it was a nightmare to score. I, I went to very reluctant 10-9 for Marlos Kuna. Very, very reluctant. close. Very reluctant 10-9 for Marlos Kuna because she was effectively trying to finish fight. Now I'm going look, north south. Yeah, with the strength of Julia Bud, too. Keep going back, backwards elbows. Misha Tate, and last year, the upset from Alexis Dufresne, the only time Marlos Kunin had been submitted in her 30 professional fights in this 17-year career. Going for the Kimura. She's in position to go for it. She's holding it, she's not committing to it yet. This is where Marlos Kunin talked about connecting the dots, that she is seeing three or four moves beyond where Julia Budd is seeing right now. That's how she sees it. And what Julia Budd is doing effectively so far in this fight is making it simple. She's not trying to outmove Marlos Kunin. She's not, you know, trying to play chess. She's playing checkers, holding her down, putting weight on her, taking away the mobility and technique of Marlos Kunin. That's what she's trying to do. And there are a few submission options here right now. Julia Budd not committing to any of them. Staying tight though. Right now, Marlis Kunin, she bumps the hips, she can escape to her left hand side like this. Yeah, careful with the way out. Yeah, Julia. That one is worked on, baby. It's there. It's there. Julia uh, Budd going Darce choke. Stay on top. Stay on top. Stay on top. Stay on top. Exactly you know what, what she wants. Stay on top. Well, the head is a little too far off right now to use it effectively. Marlis Kunin's left arm is in a good position to defend that. 
have trucks. Have trucks. Under equipment. Beautiful. Just job. power her down. Now look at Jared's tree. You need a body. Julia Budd, when she pulled out of this fight the first time in May, a debilitating back injury that wasn't just the end of that fight. It could easily have been the end of her career. She stared into the eyes of her career being over. That's one of the reasons she seems like a new woman in a new fight. She's your first time an athlete has that moment where you have to ponder the end. You realize there's still things you want to get done in the sport. And don't know what you got till it's gone. When you see it slipping away, you really appreciate it. She appreciates it. Watch your head right the See the difference when she's able to free her head. Put her head on the gate. Good job, Great job now trying to lock her down. That's what she did well in round one. Back her head up now. Back your head up. Back her head up. That's what led to the ground and pound of Julia Budd in round one. She wasn't able to free her head very often. Wasn't able to get space. Great job, Jules. You're doing good. Walks up now, once again. Jules. Triangle oh, danger. Yes. There you go, Jules. Now look at Just pass. pull the head down and angle hips. Now, we are right now where we spent a lot of round one. The, dis the difference is Julia Budden was much more successful leading up to this. She banks in good minutes. Now going for the Goldberg box. It's trying to get that leg on the neck, and it doesn't happen. Julia Budd has kept her head up a lot more, which is what she was coached to do in between rounds. One of the many reasons this round is swinging far more towards the way Julia Budd wanted this to go. Subtlety is not a word we use in this sport often, no. yet. The first two rounds have taken place in the exact same spot in the cage, and yet it really has been night and day as far as who is dictating. Right. Not only is Julie Budd dictating more in the guard, before it got to the guard, she got the takedown, she got around the guard, she had some success on top. 20 seconds, Jules. Great job. You're doing awesome. This is a Julia Budd kind of round. Making about her strength, her athleticism, her physical pressure that Marlies Kuna now has to deal with. Keep in mind as we head towards the end of round two, Julia Blood has never been in the championship rounds. Marlies Kuna, this is her sixth championship fight. Beautiful. Great job, Jules. She wants to quit. Great work, Jules. Great job. Julia Budd's coach, her husband Lance Gibson, who is, we talk about pioneers in okay. MMA. Well, you're gonna Lance Gibson round. fought Dan Severn. Okay, learn your hand. That's old school. You can knock her out, babe. <laughs> Remember, Dan Severn fought for a long Don't time. Guard. Get the it was in 1997, 20 years ago. Okay. Yes, sir. I love you. You can do this. You're the world champ. Just finish it. Two more steps. You're, you're two ahead. You can finish in this round. I know you can. I totally trust you and believe in you. See everything. An extraordinary okay. relationship between those two. Well, she said, I believe you can finish her this round. And look at this. You know, one thing I look for in any, any fight is, you know, you, sometimes you're going to get taken down. That's going to happen. Someone's got a wrestling advantage. It can't be easy. Your opponent has to spend energy to get that takedown. That's what we saw with Gonzalez Gertz. He got the takedown. It was costing him energy. And by the third round, it didn't work. You can't let Julie Budd take you down that easily. Are you ready? Are we even through two? I have it even through two. The first round, really close. It would not surprise me if a judge or more than one judge has this 2-0 so far for Julia Budd. Tell the story of fighting Chris Cyborg and throwing some of those shots and them having no effect whatsoever. What I'm not understanding tactically about what Marlos is doing is she landed some good strikes and she initiated the clinch to end up in this position against a much stronger opponent with a great takedown. Which we've seen over and over. Bear in mind, she initiated that clinch. This time in half guard. That's half butterfly, soon to be full. 
Julie Butt hasn't shown a big willingness to pass so far. I hear, I hear her, her corner saying yeah. pass, 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 but she hasn't shown a real willingness to pass so far. She's been content to stay in close guard. Rampage Jackson, his personal trainer at one time, was Julia Butt. She helped him lose about 50 pounds. At one point, we'll see Rampage and King Mo in Chicago at the end of the month. Earlier tonight, we told you Emmanuel Sanchez basically fighting at home against the former Bantamweight world champion, Marcos Galvo, moving up the featherweight. And those numbers are psychologically things judges see. I like that. When you show a willingness to pass, you make your opponent worry about more than one thing. And right now, Julia Bud showing a willingness to pass, making Marcos Cooney worry about keeping her guard. Not just worrying about submission game. In, ra in round one, Marlouz was making Julia Budd think yes. about what might be next. Now Julia Budd is doing that. Exactly. Now passing just less of a priority, less of an asset than the man is in regular jujitsu. But like I said, it gives one more thing your opponent has to worry about on the bottom. Oh, just all, let's go work. In this case, it just keeps you safe if you're Julia Budd because yeah. Marlouz Coonan is so dangerous. This is a position nine times out of ten on the mat. Marlouz Kuna gets an underhook on that side. The same side she has her, her instep hook. She gets a sweep, and right now it's not happening. Julia Budd just a different animal. Julia Budd doing what she wants to do on the ground, and I don't think she minds the stand-up. Marlos Kuna, a tie clinch from Julia Budd. Head on, just isn't working. Risky move in any way. The tentativeness, the hesitation we've seen from Julia Budd in the past, not tonight. Not there. You know what's there, I see what's there. You know what's there, I see what's there. What we practiced. What we practiced is there. Go! Go, Julia! Looking ahead and arm. Your head coach up. saying, do what we practice. As soon as he said that, she's going for the head arm. She's got to get around that leg. That's tough to do. She did it. The problem is she wants to angle to her right. That's hard to do with the cage in your way. She was out of real estate. The problem is Julie Bud's going to have trouble activating her hips. She might be strong. She just finished now. Turning her back. To relieve the pressure of the arm triangle. Stay off there. Stay off her. Put her back on her back again. Pull her back on her back. He said pull her back on her back. I don't think she's in the right angle to do that right now. I think she needs to go for the, the, the hooks instead. Watch your position. Step on top. Step on top. And she does. Staying on top. No full guard. No full guard. No full guard. Okay, let's finish it. It won't be full guard here. 45 seconds. You can finish it. Great job, Julia Bud creates some separation here. Hey, Jules, let's unload on her now. She's the one I called you mentally weak, Julia. You're just joining us. We're sitting in on some history now. The inaugural women's world title in Bellator history at 145. After a good first round, a close first round, and we thought Marlos Kuna probably won on the ground. This has been Julia Bud's fight the last two rounds. Her and her husband say she called you Rain mentally damage. weak. Watch her here, watch She's the one who's broken. Finish her now, and they're right in front seconds. of that corner. Marlouz can watch hear all of that. Watch your... Unload some jewels. Unload, 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 unload. Stand up. Unload. Stand up. Julia Budd trying to become the first Bellator women's champion will now go to the championship rounds for the very first time. Up in here. Hey, great job. So fascinating, Jimmy, that a fight that could basically have taken place in a phone booth so far has really had three different rounds, even yeah. though if you're scanning through this on your DVR, it looks exactly the same round to round, but they've been very different. The problem is, if you're a Marlouz Kunin fan, is it's getting further yes. and further and further away from her. Julia Budd is getting more and more dominant in similar positions, but every round, Julia Budd has turned up the heat a little bit more. You can do this big. You're going to be a world champ. I need you. I want to finish for this round. Okay? Shut everybody up. Baby, fully wear. Fully wear. Fully wear. You know how? Sometimes when you go to work, you get away from your spouse. 
imagine the intensity involved in working with your spouse every day and preparing for a fight like this. It's extraordinary what they go through. We're talking to Julia Budd about it the other day. So it's not always easy. I bet. It's not supposed to be. Now, I think the, the, the difference psychologically in this fight is you hear her husband coach saying, finish her this round, finish her this round, finish her this round. And she's so it's more aggressive every time. It's almost like in saying she's going to finish, she might not finish, but she's going to try to finish. She's going to put more energy, more emphasis into it, and she's been much more aggressive throughout this fight. That's the difference. Julia Budd talked to us the other day about our commentary in her previous fights when, as you know, Julia Butt's fans would get frustrated. Her coach and husband would get frustrated, and we would get frustrated. And what I said the last time we saw her was there are times Julia Butt does not believe or remember that she's Julia Butt and she can do all these things. Tonight, she's putting it all together. You just said it. Easy take down. Don't you recognize how easy, look at that, all the way to full mount. Now, Marlos Kuna has got problems. Julia Bunt pulling it on. Does she see the finish line? Marlos Kunin trying to defend herself. Got to move. That means it's near the end. John McCarthy gave her the warning. Julia Bunt got one of those elbows through. Pouring it on. All the work, all the years, all the win. All the waiting for this opportunity. And Big John giving her a lot of time to get back in this. The reason why she's kept her guard high. Not a lot of those have gotten through. Got to wonder how much energy Julia Bud is expending if she doesn't get the finish right now. You always talk about the training, Jimmy, doing that one extra run, staying late that one extra day so you have the energy in the tank in a fourth round of a championship fight to pull it on like this. Yep. Yeah. Marlis Kuhn has to bump, she has to do something to keep her from punching like this. As long as she keeps doing that, she's going to stop it eventually. Right now, so far, Marlis Kunin doesn't look like she has much left in the tank. She's just holding her arms up. Not able to move, not shrimping, not escaping this mouth. One more warning from John McCarthy. Marlis Kunin turns, but can't escape. That Julia Budd, okay. who spent her childhood taking ferries back and forth to the mainland tonight, has climbed the mountain. Okay. She is I Bellator's know, know. first featherweight world champion. That is the sound of a torch passing from Marlus Kunin to Julia Budd because this was a wipeout. A close first round, but that's all we got after that. Julia Budd all over Marlis Kunin. She deserves this. She's the future at 145. The present and the future at 145 in Bellator is Julia Budd. Let's check out the Black Art Premium Spice Rum Replay, the bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. There were brief exchanges on the feet, but the ease of the takedown for Julia Budd was the story of this fight. This is what ended it, ground and pound. John McCarthy let Marluz Kunin have every opportunity to get back in this fight. She could not do it, couldn't escape the mount, couldn't move. Their only defense was keeping her hands up, and that was not enough. Right in front of her husband. Seems like she spent the whole fight in her corner. They are thrilled as they should be. After seven years, 11 fights, Julia Budd finally puts it all together to become the world champion. They messed up your hair. <laughs> and if you thought she was emotional when she got to touch the championship belt for the first time on Wednesday, you can feel all of it come off her shoulders now. Guys back home, Port Moody, Sunshine Coast. 
I don't think the Sunshine Coast needed to be told. They are losing their minds there right now because the world title is coming back to Western Canada. Michael C. Williams makes the history official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Big John McCarthy steps in and waves off the contest due to strikes official time. Two minutes, 42 seconds into round number four, the winner by TKO, and now, Bellator's inaugural women's featherweight world champion, Julia the Jewel Bug. The new champion with Jimmy Smith. I'm here with the winner and the new champion, Julia Bud. You said it was emotional taking a photo with that thing on. Now it is yours. Now you're the first. How does it feel? Amazing. It's been a long road. <laughs> um, I don't think anything's ever felt as good as this. So uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to start crying. But um, I just want to thank everyone that helped me get here. Everybody at Gibson MMA. My friends and family back on the Sunshine Coast. I couldn't do it without you guys. You couldn't have scripted it any better in terms of, you knew you always had the physical tools. You said, I never put it together the way I knew I could. It all came together tonight. Is that how it felt? Yeah, I got the finish. I really wanted to finish her. I said I was gonna do it and I made a point to do it and it took me a little longer than I wanted it to, but uh, don't ever call me mentally weak. That just triggered something that turned me into an animal. I just wanted to kill her. Uh, you didn't kill, you did an outstanding job. Great stoppage. I wanna talk to Marluz for a second. Marluz, I know you well. I've known you for a long time. You put everything into that fight. Was it your night tonight? No, uh, I was expecting a war, but Julia gave me hell. Deep respect to her. And uh, I would like to announce this was my last fight. I retire. And uh, I would like to thank Scott Coker. You were the first uh, promoter who recognized that women are a force to be reckoned with. I want to thank Rumer, my longtime partner and trainer. I want to thank Leon. And I want to give a shout out to the best mayor in the world uh, of Amsterdam. We found out a few weeks ago he's sick. Ebert van der Laan, please know you're in our heart. You've meant tremendous good to the sport of uh, mixed martial arts. And Julia, congratulations. Awesome job. We retired a legend tonight. Congratulations. You're the champ, Marloos. You've done so much for the sport. Thank you so much. We'll see you again very soon, champ. Julia Bond, ladies and gentlemen. Give her a hand. Also, Marloos Koonin, a legend, her last fight tonight. The sport has been elevated by many over the years, over the decades, and this goes beyond MMA. We're talking about the women's national soccer team. We're talking about Title IX. We're talking about all the strides forward that women's athletics have made. But that woman has done as much for the sport of women's MMA that we sit here tonight, Jimmy, and don't need to call it women's MMA anymore. And let that be the legacy of Marlouz Kuna. Yeah, that's, that's tough. I've known Marlouz for a long time. I spent some time with her in Amsterdam recently. Great person. Her whole team's fantastic. She's walking away. She's meant so much to the sport. All the fans should give her her respect. She's a pioneer, that's for sure. And there is no classier way to pass the torch than the way she just did to the future. Julia Budd sits on top of the world. We had waited for her perfect fight. We waited for her perfect night. And on the biggest night of her life, she delivered. If that Julia Budd who fought tonight is how she's going to fight in the future, she's going to hold that belt for a long time. She's going to be tough to beat. She's beaten Jermaine Duran to me. Tonight, she retires Marluz Kunin. Julia Budd is on top of the world.